Die verslaggever en skryver Richard Poplack sy nieuwe boek Until Julius Comes Adventures in the Political Jungle het pas verskyn. Dit is een versameling van sy essays wat hy voor en tydens van die jaarse nationale verkiesing vir die Daily Maverick geskryf het. En ons gesels vandag met Richard hier oor. Welcome Richard. Thanks. Richard, you write under the pseudonym Hannibal Elector. Tell us about the differences between Hannibal Elector and Richard Poplack and why the pseudonym? Well, I think Hannibal Elector was sort of an excuse to... Um I guess go a little bit nuts in this sort of political playground that uh, that we kind of all live in here. Um, you know, Hannibal L Lecter writes with a bottle of Witblitz next to him. I try to write some of my copy sober. Um, and, you know, it was sort of stuff like that. It was just um, how, how wild and how different could I go within the context of writing about politics in this country? Um, and he sort of gave me the, an excuse to sort of take the straight jacket off and go, go a little bit nuts. Yeah. So it kind of gave you license to be more like risky with what you're writing Absolutely. and say exactly what you think. Yeah, I think, you know, it's not just a problem in this country. I think it's a problem in a lot of places. You know, there's this idea that political writing has to be either serious or satirical and funny. Yeah. Um, I don't believe that at all. I think, you, you know, um, some of the guys I really look up to, uh, Hunter S. Thompson and, and et al, understood that it could be deeply, deeply hilarious and deeply, deeply serious at the same time. Yeah. You know. You spoke about Hunter S. Thompson. Now, how do you feel about the comparison between your book and Hunter S. Thompson's Fear and Loathing on the, on the campaign trail? I'm flattered, obviously. Um, I mean, obviously, he's a, he's a huge forebear of mine, and I, and I, I take a lot of what he did um, very, very seriously. I mean, I love his work. I absolutely love it. Um, that said, it's a, it's a bit of a different era, you yeah. know, and I'm not quite sure um, one can get away with, with with what he did uh, back in the day that you can now. I, th I think you have to be a little more uh, careful of, of the facts these days. Yeah. Um, you know, I's dotted, T's crossed. And, mm. and, you know, until Julius comes, it's very much that. I mean, we didn't want the material to, to you know, head towards fiction at any point. So, yeah, we were quite, we were quite sort of conscientious about, A, who this, you know, who our forebears were here, and Hunter S. Thompson's obviously a major, major influence on the work, but at the same time, make it really, really contemporary and really, really of the moment and of South Africa. Yeah. Do you think South Africans are a little bit wary of that style, or do you think we, we're getting to know it and kind of getting, to being, being able to engage with it? Oh, I think at first people were totally baffled. I, you, you know, some of the comments on, on, on the first pieces were, well, you know, what the heck is this? Yeah. You know, is this what? Uh, we, you know, people just couldn't figure it out. So it was this, you know, process of, of trying to not educate the reader, but just, you know, not sticking to, sticking to our guns and just saying, you know, at, at the Daily Maverick, it was like, listen, we're not worried about, yeah. you know, what the readers think initially. Well, they'll sort of come around or they won't come around. And it, it seemed like a lot of people did. And uh, yeah, the style sort of, you know, sort of picked up a, a lot of fans along the way. And that's why halfway through the campaign, uh, a publishing company approached us and said, let's, let's do this. Let's turn yeah. this into a book. How have your travels and the fact that you've lived in various countries in the world, namely um, you've been in Tehran, Canada, also Egypt, how has that affected your view of South Africa and how you write about South Africa? Massively. I think, you know, the, the challenge with so much of, uh, of what we do here is that, um, is that there's just no, you know, there's no, not a lot of perspective. Yeah. And uh, I think that's really been the, the, the sort of case that, you know, what, what my travels and what working the beat in the Middle East and what working the beat in other countries has done is provided me with a little bit of perspective. And, and you know, there's numerous journeys, uh, journalists in this country who, who have great perspective, but I yeah. just think for myself, it's sort of, allowed me to A, put things in, in a wider context, and B, just to, to drag experiences from other places and sort of put them into my writing. Uh, many of the journalists I've met on the road, daring people, um, stylistically daring pe people, uh, physically daring people, you know, and sort of roll those guys into my work and sort of, um, you know, sort of bake it into the recipe, I guess. Yeah. The book is titled Until Julius Comes, but it's not only specifically focused on Julius. There's some stuff about Helen Zilla, Jacob Zuma. No one is left unscathed. Who really impressed you in, during the elections and who were you actually shocked by how bad they were? Um, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I think, you know, I'm always stunned at how bad an orator uh, President Jacob Zuma is. I mean, there's just almost nothing more boring than listening to him to, to him speak. That said, you, you almost start wondering halfway through the campaign if, if that isn't a technique, you know, if boredom isn't a weapon, 
in, in his arsenal. And then, you know, what really kind of blew me away um, was, was how, how the ANC stuck to a good story to tell. Um, you know, they never wavered from that. And it turned out being almost a genius election st strategy. If I were writing a textbook, I think, about election strategies, I'd, I'd say, listen, just create your own reality. Yeah. You know, you, you have a good story to tell, stick by it. That's a great tagline. Slap it on a bumper sticker and there you go. So I, I think um, that, that was kind of, you know, darkly impressive. Uh, the DA just baffled me throughout. Um, and then, of course, there was the EFF. I mean, you know, the, the book's not, not called Until Julius Comes by Accident. I mean, these, these guys did an incredible job, I think, out of rising out of, out of nowhere yeah. and, uh, and, and really coming out and, and shocking everybody by getting the kind of numbers that they did. Um, had they registered, um, uh, you know, had, had they had an election re registration campaign prior to the election, I think their percentage points would have been even higher. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, they kind of they kind of blew me away. Do you th you know the the ANC? They've been quoted as saying that the ANC will be in power until Jesus comes. Do you think the ANC will only be in power until Julius comes into power? Well, I don't know when Jesus is, is planning <laughs> on coming back. Um, he he should probably think about coming soon. If uh, if yeah, if he's going to beat Julius out. So I, I think um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be until until Julius comes. Yeah. You know, obviously there's. There's nuances there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> madness is also an important theme in your book. Do you think we as South Africans have to kind of have a little bit of madness to make sense of all the madness around us? Because this is a crazy country that we live in. It's a totally crazy country. Um, yes, I mean, one of the themes of the book is madness. And I contend that, um, y you know, our politicians sort of almost stoke that, that nuttiness, that, that madness, just to, just to keep the fires burbling. Uh, to keep us all insane, to keep us in this, you know, fake, fictitious yeah. world that they're, they're kind of building for us. Um, so absolutely, I think, you know, madness is a big, big theme in the book. And, and so is the sense of, of unreality, yeah. the sense where we live in a constructed universe that, that actually bears no resemblance to the one we actually live in. And uh, that is, that's enormously dangerous. Yeah. It's been almost three months since the elections. Have you seen anything kind of come to fruition that you thought was going to happen? What, what do you think, the, the, poli the situation, the political situation right now, what do you think of it since the elections? Um, a, a couple of surprising things. I, I think um, I, I was a little taken aback at the sort of mini DA meltdown right after the elections with Ndiwe Mazibuko being uh, sent off to Harvard or going off to Harvard and uh, Mamusi Mamane moved into to, to running, uh, running parliament. That was a little, that was a little, I was a little taken aback. Um, I think the EFF have done an amazing job of maintaining uh, momentum, keeping the narrative. Um, as usual, I think the ANC are, are on the back foot and doing a pretty lousy job. And I'm sort of taken aback that NUMSA um, hasn't made a bigger play at, at, at developing a, a sort of left-wing labor union party, which this country desperately needs. I mean, we need a real labor left-wing yeah. that, can, that can sort of take on the ANC in its, in its own court. Um, and I'm sort, of, I'm sort of a bit surprised that that hasn't happened. But I think, you know, the major story is obviously the fact that the EFF have kept the narrative so strongly in their yeah. court. The, the red overalls in Parliament, the fist fights, the, um, you know, the rallies, they're, they're still at it. It's still like a, the election hasn't really stopped. Yeah, and people are actually talking about what's happening in Parliament now, which I've never really noticed before. Yeah, I'm not sure any of us really recognised that we had a Parliament. Yeah. You know, they just, you know, politicians went off somewhere and did stuff. Yeah, and the and debate is now almost taking place outside the doors as well, which is good. Absolutely. I, you know, it's not bad for this, this democracy. And, you know, the real question is, why the heck are we wearing suits? I mean, I should probably be in an overall right now. You know, why are we wearing suits and jackets in Parliament? Yeah. It's nonsense. So, yeah, I, I kind of like the fact that they've, they've sort of grabbed this narrative and, and, and have stuck with it. And I think, you know, that, that's a little bit harder than, than people give them credit for. I, th I, think it's, I think in that respect, they've done a very, very good job. Yeah. How do we, I know this is a really broad question, but how do we get rid of unfairness and inequality? Because that, that, that's the one of the, those are the major issues that are keeping the country from, from a sense of cohesion. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that, that I write in Until Julius Comes is, is, is the fact that we really haven't dismantled the mechanisms that existed during the apartheid regime. 
And one of the reasons the EFF has gotten, have gotten as much traction as they have is because these mechanisms are still in place. You go into, you know, I spend a lot of time in very, very, very poor communities. And you look around and you see the Nyalas there and you see the cops there and, you know, it's, it's, it's like things haven't changed at all. And I think we, we really have to be conscious, and I mean this in a broad spectrum across yeah. society. It can't just be the ANC. It's got to be all of us. To be far more cognizant of the fact that this society isn't going to hold together if its unevenness and its, and its inequalities remain in place. Uh, it gives the opportunity, it gives the floor to guys like the EFF yeah. to take the narrative and take control of it. And that's exactly what's happened. I, I think across the board, we have to understand that this is just not sustainable. So what do we do? Um, I think, you know, we have to push uh, business, we have to push government, we have to push ourselves to, to just be far more cognizant of the fact that we have to engage more and more people in the, the country's narrative. Otherwise, we're done for. Yeah, such an interesting discussion. Thank you very much for joining us, My Richard. My pleasure. That was Richard Poplak, but we're showing you a book, Until Julius Comes, Gesellschaft.